Good day, um, I'm Paul Worrell. I am the founder and chief developer of Zonified. Um, I had a really interesting incident yesterday, so I thought it would be a good topic to discuss. Now, what happened um, yesterday, um, I have an email account that I don't use very often. It's um, sort of a backup email account. And um, I happened to um, check it um, and have a little bit of extra time. And uh, I had noticed an occasional email of a certain type um, about a um, car that uh, uh, was booked in for service. I had, I had seen this a number of times and I just ignored it because I just thought it was scam. Um, but for some reason yesterday I decided to have a, uh, to investigate it. And uh, it seemed to be a very regular email every couple of months. Um, obviously I'm very careful about not resolving any of the links in the email. Um, so I read it, I started to check out some of the um, contacts that were on it, um, the company behind it. Um, you know, check company's house to see if they were real, check their website, check their SSL certificate. Um, and started to realize it was probably um, uh, quite genuine. I also noticed with the emails that the company in question was actually improving their customer <laughs> services um, and um, getting more and more advanced with the use of uh, digital technologies in servicing their customers. Um, and uh, when I actually uh, investigated it properly and saw it through, I realized that there was somebody else with exactly the same uh, name of myself um, with almost exactly the same email address. And somehow um, that identity um, had become established with this company. And um, I'm surprised that the people don't don't realize, the person who actually owns the address doesn't realize, um, but um, uh, because they would have not been getting this digital service. Um, so maybe they, they haven't uh, realized that the company they're dealing with is trying quite hard to give them a good service. But anyway, that piece of information in some way is incorrect or because of the way that the email address is being passed somewhere or handled in the email service provider, um, I'm getting these emails. Now, when I checked out um, the person, as obviously um, I'm quite good at, uh, uh, what do they call it, forensics, <laughs> I actually found out that the person was um, uh, in the uh, Ministry of Defence. <laughs> so uh, it was quite interesting that here's a, a person that is in the MOD and we suddenly have some strange problem. Now, what does it, what, what does this mean? Why am I talking about this? I'm, I'm actually going to call the person, talk them today and try and resolve it. And hopefully there's no, um, there isn't any scam or, or, or anything like that. Um, but it will be interesting to see what their reaction is when I call them up and explain to them that um, uh, uh, I've become them in this particular instance. Now, what does it mean to self-sovereign identity and our philosophy of Zonified? I think that's the important point. Okay, so um, how, how does... Um, how has things transpired? I, I, even, I almost feel like I've had this discussion before. Um, well, I have had this discussion many times before, but I, I, I almost feel like I've already talked about this in one of the, the previous uh, vlogs. Okay, but at the moment, you see, uh, all you are as a, as a person um, in society, um, in both the public and the private sector, all you are is a record. Okay. You're just a record, you know, name, uh, you know, first name, surname, uh, maybe there's some kind of identifier, etc. That That's all you are. And um, from their point of view, um, there are certain 
processes that they have around this record, right? Um, so it will be a public sector record, uh, for example, like the record that you were actually born. Um, or it could be a private sector record where you're a customer and the objective is obviously to maximize the amount of money they are getting from you. Okay. Um, of course, there's lots of arguments that, well, they have to do that prov by providing value. Both the public and private sector are providing some kind of value, but it's still the case that when it gets down to the accounting, it's a record, um, that represents uh, somebody and um, they want to get um, money or reduce the money or whichever way is the appropriate direction. Right, so, so and you're here. Okay, so as this concept has evolved, you've then got many organisations with their own record of so re their own record, I'm not going to say their own record of, um, uh, of you, because what I'm trying to say is what is this a record of? Um, people will argue the case that, well, it's a record of a person, but is it really? Okay, is it really a record of a person? I don't think so. I think it's an accounting record uh, with some kind of financial um, amount on it. And you are completely independent of that, okay? So every organization has their own record of you and their own view of, um, uh, you know, some form of control um, or some form of benefit that they have from having that record. So your life at the moment is that every time you go and interact with one of these organizations, um, all they care about is making sure that this record um, uh, uh, relates to the person wanting to uh, represent the record. Um, even that's a step too far in my opinion because it implies you have some control over the record. Um, but in reality, the record, they control it. Um, they're just delegating a degree of influence you have over that. Right, but you you don't have access to it. Um, every time you approach an organisation, you have to go through some uh, vigorous way of proving that you are what this record pertains to, right? And you have to do that over and over and over and over and over again. Now, of course, as we've gone, we've become internetified, right? We've got a few digital service providers. Um, you know, the classic ones, um, you know, the Google, the Microsoft, um, Yahoo, yeah, or yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, and other ones, okay. Now, they've realized that um, through the online services they provide, um, they have the opportunity to become a record or well, not become a record but they have a record um, that you represent and you also are proving yourself as the person with control over that record with them when you when you're logging in okay and um, they realized that they could start to offer this service as kind of an identity service and I'm not going to get into identity in a big way. I always say that we're um, at Zonified is not in the identity business. All right. So, um, but th these guys thought, oh, this is this is an opportunity for us to try and provide this as a service. And that's why sometimes now you'll use other um, online uh, services, maybe with your mobile phone app or something and they'll pop up and say would you like to reuse your google login um, or your facebook login um, with this other service provider okay um, and all of this is an evolution into total disaster 
<laughs> okay, um, uh, you, you're becoming more and more disenfranchised from who you are and what you can do. So what self-sovereign means and um, people in the crypto blockchain space are very passionate um, about this, okay? Um, and of course, because the establishment, all of the established um, organizations benefit big time by owning effectively a, a, a record of who you are and, con and controlling that record, um, for them to give that up, there'll be quite a fight. Okay, but what self-sovereign means is that instead of you having to prove your record, you have your record. You have it, and you also have possibly any data related to yourself. So you have that and you control that, right? Ignore the fact that, that, that you know, things about cloud, but you control it, it's yours, okay? Um, and then every organization, okay, um, when you interact with them, you present your data. Now, of course, th the issue is, is how do they know who you are? So one aspect of self-sovereign, our aspect, is that this uh, data and these attributes that are attesting to who you are, um, are actually attested to <laughs> um, by um, uh, oracles or um, other trusted parties, okay? So they kind of sign it. It could be your social network, some kind of social network proof. Um, it could be, uh, you know, school. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, your work, where you work. But these entities all basically provide an attestation that this is um, a true representation of you. One of the unique aspects of this is that these people now own, don't really have to look at the data itself to determine who you are, but they will probably want to look at one of these attestations. So for example, if you're going into the bar to buy a drink, at the moment you give quite a bit of information to do that, to prove, sorry, that you are legally entitled to buy a drink, assuming there is some legal age required where you live to buy a drink, okay? So in actual fact, that isn't necessary with self-sovereign um, identity um, because you just are able to present um, your, yourself, okay? And all they do is check that there is an entitlement that you have um, that uh, proves that you are, have the right to um, consume alcohol, okay? And when you start thinking like that, it completely change, changes everything. What, what is really difficult for the establishment is that, of course, if you move to this complete self-sovereign way of doing things, it does mean that these guys do not have data about you, okay? Now, of course, it's very important for them that they've got possibly, obviously, millions of customers and they want this to be full with as much information as they can so that they can analyze information, um, they can find opportunities, they can influence people to do certain things and they can sell the information to third parties, etc. So society on private and public side is, this is, they, they, they don't even see this as kind of wrong. I think they are starting to now with GDPR, etc. because obviously that's educated people. But they, this has just been normal. I mean, yeah, of course. But the problem is, as we've moved to a more digital culture, um, if we look at the problem that's happened with uh, this email um, uh, issue that I've got and I have to resolve, that there, there is so m such a, a massive chance that something's going to go wrong and you will not be able to prove who you are um, 
and uh, you will not be able to control uh, things that ultimately um, will be will will affect you. So that that's what self suffering is. Um, it's it's trying to put all of what is you and represents you um, and your entitlements in your control. Um, technically, where this is put and how it works is uh, irrelevant. But what what the important thing is that you control it and it's not controlled by all these organizations. OK, so, so there you go. That That's my interpretation of what self-sovereign is. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to call this person now and see if I can um, uh, see what the experience is of trying to explain to this person the problem that's happened and see how they, they felt about it and I'll, I'll report back. Okay, so, so I think I've got to the bottom of that. Um, I um, uh, found um, the person's wife and um and a number and i called um which was her um place of work where she doesn't work anymore but they are still in contact with her happen to be seeing her today so they'll let her know to contact me um i also called the um the place that was um uh, sending me the email uh, they're perfectly legitimate um, they understood um, and uh, they will also contact the person. Um, I did try and email the person, but the email came to me. So on investigation, actually the root of the problem, I don't believe is going to be a security issue at all. Um, it's just that um, I commonly use dots in my email and uh, Google, uh, which was the email provider, um, uh, hence me being worried about it because we all use Google as uh, an important way of accessing a lot of services. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the dots are ignored basically. So um, the email that was being sent to me didn't have the dots in and I normally use them. Uh, so t I would expect that when these people call me back, if they bother, um, it'll be to say that they realised they had a problem with an email address some time ago and they abandoned that so that they used a different one or possibly um, uh, the service provider they were using actually put the wrong email address in there. So, um, but anyway, you can see that by entrusting other organisations to have control over such an important record, it is incredibly worrying when something odd starts to happen and you have to start contacting people that you otherwise have no knowledge of um, to try and get to the bottom of the problem. Uh, I myself ignored this for a good year, um, thinking it was just scam, a scam email. So um, if you imagine the amount of email that we get um, and the amount of strange things that happen and you have to actually go and manage them and check that there's not going to be a negative impact on yourself. Um, if you carry on trusting many organisations to control uh, something that represents you, uh, you're going to spend your whole life fixing problems that these people cause. So self-sovereign is the answer. And we're all working on products to help you become self-sovereign. Okay. Till next time, bye.